Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today I'm going to be doing my almost final 2021 NHL mock draft simulation. Now if only two teams left in the NHL playoffs, we have a great idea of what the first round order will be in the 2021 NHL entry draft, but how will this entry draft, at least in the first round, actually end up looking like? Which players will go to which teams, who are the top prospects, and what trades could we potentially see on draft? draft day. Watch till the end for the entire simulation in every single pick and hit that subscribe button if you're new. 60% of the people watching are not subscribed. We make daily hockey content on this channel and if you like hockey, this is the place to be. Now we're going to go through the entire top 31 picks in the 2021 NHL draft and this draft I think creates so many possibilities for trades and movement and surprises and although it isn't a spectacular draft it's not going to be as good as 2020 or 2022 I think that is almost in its favor in terms of entertainment because especially the Seattle Kraken draft looming it will be before the draft but I think we will see some movement before that as well. I think there's going to be a lot of picks that do end up being moved. I mean Jack Michael we're probably going to see a first round pick involved in that trade. So there's a lot to look forward to. I think there'll be a lot of movement in the top 31, but I don't think there will be any movement for the first overall pick. The Buffalo Sabres, unless they get something crazy, will keep that first overall pick. And going on to number one, it's pretty much confirmed at this point who they would go for. There's been some rumors that they might go something different, but I don't really see too much substance in it. At the first overall pick, at number one, and to start out the mock draft simulation, the Buffalo Sabres will select with the first overall pick, Owen Power. Especially after his really, really solid and really refined world championships, I think Owen Power is almost a lock at number one. And although he is not a lock at number one for me whatsoever, in fact, I still have number two at this current time, Owen Power still has a lot of qualities that I think can translate to the NHL. He has those talents, but hasn't really truly unlocked them. I think the potential is there, but we will have to wait and see what he does in the Buffalo Sabres. Good luck. Owen. Now we're going to move on to the second overall pick and the Seattle Kraken's pick here. And over time, I've had Matty Beniers as Seattle's pick at number two. And I think that would be the best pick available for sure and a great start to their franchise. But the more I think about it for Seattle, the more I think they go slightly off the board. And with the second overall pick, I think they will select USNTP defenseman Luke Hughes. Now, this is for a variety of reasons. Again, I think when it comes to the second overall pick, Beniers would be an excellent choice. But Luke Hughes also is a great choice, too. He has great size, great athleticism, and amazing skating ability and range on him. Defensively, there's so much potential there. If he can get his consistency and his overall work ethic wrapped up, the offense is there, too. Power play-wise, he can be an absolute beast. There's a lot of potential in Luke Hughes, and there is a possibility he becomes the best player of this draft. But the reason I think Seattle takes him is because of the history of guys like Ron Francis, who in their time in Carolina took defenseman after defenseman, especially from North America, to build that defense group. Now we're going to go on to the third overall pick and move on to the Anaheim Ducks and who they will end up selecting to finish off the top three. And I think they will go for USA centerman Matty Beniers. Matty Beniers is simply put a great pick at number three. And there is a really solid chance they pick a defenseman here. I could see that, but I think Anaheim could pretty much solidify their four group here, getting Beneers and getting Trevor Zegers. I mean, it was proposed to me uh, like about a couple weeks ago that they could have a top two center core of Zegers and Beneers. And I think that is absolutely perfect for a team building an identity for the future. And now we can move on to the fourth overall pick, this time by the New Jersey Devils. But wait just a second. We have the first trade to announce between the New Jersey Devils and the Detroit Red Wings. Now, according to Elliot Freeman, the New Jersey Devils are planning or maybe potentially planning on trading that fourth overall pick for perhaps a young defenseman or a potential halt for surrounding that pick. I think we will see a trade involving New Jersey and Detroit swapping picks. But what does this trade actually look like? Well, let me tell you. To the New Jersey Devils, they will get the sixth overall pick, Dennis Chalowski and Philip Ronick. In exchange for Detroit, they will get the fourth overall pick, moving up two spots, two crucial spots in this draft, by the way, and they get a 2021 third round pick on top of that. But 
But now going on to the fourth overall pick, who are now uh, who's now owned by the Detroit Red Wings, they will end up selecting Swedish winger. William Eklund. I really doubt at this point that William Eklund goes through New Jersey, let alone the Columbus Blue Jackets at fifth overall. And I think Detroit is definitely honing in on Eklund in this draft if he is potentially available. And if New Jersey wanted to trade that fourth overall pick, they could end up giving a couple of guys that they don't really have too much for future term in and guys like Ronick, guys like Chalowski, who they have a lot more term and guys like Cider for the future, where Chalowski and Ronick don't really have a huge part in that, I don't think. But now we end and the top five with the fifth overall pick and the Columbus Blue Jackets. No trade will happen here, but I think Columbus will end up selecting defenseman Simone Edmondson. With Seth Jones likely leading the team due to trade this offseason, I think Columbus will kind of try to replenish that defense prospect side of things where there's not really anybody right now besides Samuel Knasko, perhaps. But I think uh, Simone Edmondson definitely has potential to be great on Columbus. Decent defensive play, great overall potential. He's a guy that could be one of the most boomer bust prospects of this draft. The IQ can sometimes just be frustrating, but Columbus has turned great overall potentials into great overall products. So we'll see if that happens with Simone Evanson as well. Now we're going to move on to number six. They'll go on to the New Jersey Devils. They drop back two spots, but still find their guy. And I think they will go for defensive prospect Brant Clark. And I do also want to say dropping down to the draft, I think also depends on Luke Hughes' availability. But with him going second overall, I think he will be outside of New Jersey's grasp. But at sixth overall, they get Brant Clark, who I think could be great for them. Not only the defensive defense, but that they do need for the future, but great transition ability, great skating, great offensive mind. He's a guy that's pretty forward thinking and I think will be a super fun defenseman, especially alongside forwards like Jack Hughes, uh, William Eklund, and of course, Alexander Holtz. But now we can move on to the seventh overall pick and falling into the laps of the San Jose Sharks, they will end up selecting Swedish goaltender. Jesper Wallstedt. This is just a perfect fit in so many different ways. Martin Jones just is not it anymore. We've known that for a long time, but they need a goaltender of the future, and Wallstedt is perfectly that. Great maturity, one of the best positional goalies you'll ever see. The IQ on him, the, the smarts is just absolutely there. Wallstedt brings a lot of great qualities and could be one of the best goaltenders of this future generation. But now moving on to the eighth overall pick, we're going to move on to the Los Angeles Kings, and this is the an unfortunate spot for them because I don't think there's anybody that perfectly fits their team right now in terms of that top 10 at that current spot, especially with the players already gone. But I think they will go for a winger and go for Dylan Gunther. Now again, Dylan Gunther is in a perfect fit. Los Angeles has a lot of forwards already in that prospect pool, but I think Dylan Gunther is just adding to those riches in a really interesting way. He is a great overall two-way force, but his shot, I think, can definitely be unlocked by the Los Angeles Kings. They already got a lot of good playmakers on that team. This shot could definitely add a boost to that prospect pool. Now going on to the ninth overall pick, though, in the Vancouver Canucks. This is pretty much a set-in-stone pick. If he's available, I think they will go for Kent Johnson. Ken Johnson just makes a lot of sense for Vancouver in a lot of different ways. Of course, he's coming from BC. He was growing up as a Vancouver Canucks fan. He's a guy that I think, fitting Vancouver style, has a lot to offer. He likely won't be a center, but just his skill, his overall creativity is just so, so tantalizing. And I think Vancouver is a team that could unlock that. They've unlocked that in the past. And just imagining him playing with Elias Pettersson, that would be absolutely nasty. But now we can go on to the 10th overall pick and the Ottawa Senators. And just like at number 9 with Ken Johnson, I think this is a player that would be a lock if he's available at number 10 for Ottawa. I think the Sens at this spot will go for a big-time centerman, Mason McTavish. At this point, I have a hard time seeing Mason McTavish outside the top 10. If he does go outside the top 10, he's going to number 11 for Chicago. That's pretty much set in stone, I think. And with Mason McTavish, he's pretty much in that same spot for me. He has a lot of great qualities. one of the only true centers in this draft which definitely raises his stock, but he just got a great overall tool set. Nothing that absolutely blows you away, but he just has got a lot of fundamental tools. His skating is really consistent. His work ethic is consistent. His play, his dri his play driving is exceptional. He just got a lot of great qualities. I think will aid him to the NHL level. Now we're going to move on to the 11th overall pick by the Chicago Blackhawks, but again, wait a second. We have a trade to announce between the Chicago Blackhawks and the Edmonton 
Oilers. Yes, just just hold, buckle your seatbelts. Get ready for this one. All right, to the Chicago Blackhawks. They will receive the 19th overall pick, Caleb Jones, and a 2022 third round pick in exchange for Edmonton. They will move up to the 11th overall pick. Chicago exchanging pick, Chicago and Edmonton exchanging picks, and, Edm and Chicago gets Caleb Jones in a 2022 third in the process, and you'll see with who Edmonton takes. This could work out for both teams involved. Now we're going to move on to 11th overall and go on to the Edmonton Oilers making a surprise trade, and they will select from the Edmonton Oil Kings, goaltender Sebastian Casa. I think this is a just a perfect fit and it will have to I think have to be a trade up for it to actually happen because Casa is a super valuable prospect and could go top 15 for sure I see him going 11 and it would make a lot of sense Edmonton desperately needs that goaltender clear goaltender of the future they have a couple of decent guys that I think could work kind of like Ottawa where you have some guys that could be NHL guys but nothing that's clear and set in stone Sebastian Casa is absolutely a clear goaltending prospect though but now we're going to go on to the 12th overall pick and yet another Canadian team at number 12. I think the Calgary Flames will end up selecting Chaz Lucius. I think this fit is just simply too good. He has so many good qualities, so many good traits, and even though the skating I think might hold him back from true stardom in the NHL, the goal scoring could be one of the best in this draft, if not the best. There was a recent athletic article detailing his injury recovery and just how much of a beast he was in rehab and getting that injury back to form and getting back to the US and TDP. He is an absolute monster when it comes to the attitude, the work ethic. He will put in the work to make the NHL Shell, it's just a matter of how good he becomes. I think in Calgary, he would be awesome though and a great fit on that franchise. Now we're going to move on to the 13th overall pick in the Philadelphia Flyers. This was a hard pick to pinpoint if I'm being honest, but I'm going to go with USA board winger Matthew Coronado. Matthew Coronado is an interesting guy. In terms of the points, in terms of the production, you would think he would be a top 10 prospect, but that isn't exactly the case. A lot of the production has come from being on the best team really in USA history in the Chicago Steel. A lot of that is because of the power play opportunity they're given where it's just all there for Matthew Coronado. But do not get me wrong, there's still a lot to like in Coronado's game, even though I wouldn't pick him 13th overall. The production is a lot of the times warranted. He does put in the work. He's got a great shot. His skill is just booming. Now we're going to move on to the 14th overall pick though and go out to my Dallas Stars. This is also a pick I've gone back and forth on. I don't think there's any way they pick a defenseman. I think they will go for a forward and that forward will end up being Xavier or Xavier Bergo. I think Xavier Bergo has a lot of interesting qualities, and he's also the teammate of their first rounder last year in Maverick Bork, who, working off each other well throughout the QMJHL season, was just such a productive, consistent line. I think they will go for the teammates of Maverick Bork in Borgo, but not just because they're teammates, just because Borgo is a really good offensive player. He's a little bit fragile, a little bit frail, but he does still have a lot of the work put in. He's got great overall skill. His skating is just fundamentally so fun to watch. Now we're going to go on to the 15th overall pick though in the New York Rangers. I see them picking Finnish centerman Atu Ratu. I think it's just too much of a fit, man. They need a center right in that middle six in the prospect pool, and Radu is just such a good developed prospect already. There might not be too much of a ceiling for him, I think, but there's still a lot of skills to unlock. His offensive game has stalled since 2019, but his defensive game is one of the best in this draft, and his overall potential is just so good, I think. I think New York can unlock that, and him of Capocaco would be one of the most devastating two-way defensive pairs pairings to go up against. But now going outside the top 15 to the 16th overall pick, and we will go to another great center prospect for the St. Louis Blues. I think they will select Russian centerman Fyodor Zvechkov. Now, the St. Louis Blues have shown in the past, especially recently, they are not afraid to take Russian prospects. Obviously, a lot of Vladimir Tarasenko comes to mind, but recently in guys like Nikita Alexandrov and Clint Costin, they go the Russian route quite a bit. And I think Fedor Svechkov is a great bet at number 16. Kind of like Adorado has a lot of great qualities. His neutral zone play is just soul-crushing for the other team to go against. His defensive acumen, IQ, is just exceptional. His passing is great. His, his just underlying numbers are fantastic. Fantastic. I think in terms of the NHL projectability, he could totally become a second line center if all goes right. Now going on to the 17th overall pick though in the Winnipeg Jets, my pick for them is going to go right back from the WHL and go to Carson Lambos. Now, 
I think when it comes to Winnipeg, they're in a weird position on whether they take a forward or a goaltender. They might take another forward, but I think, or uh, defense. They might take another forward, but I think defense is where they'll go this time. And if Carson Lambos is available, I think that will be their pick. They He played right in their backyard with the Winnipeg Ice. And I think in terms of defensive potential, in terms of physical pressure, and just the potential that he has two-way size there. I, I mean, there's a lot to like in Carson Lambos if it does project. But the NHL readiness, it might take a while for him to fully adapt to the pro game. Now we're going to go on to number 18 though the national predators this might be one of the bigger off the board picks in this first round mock draft but i'm gonna go with them going with canadian forward francesco pinelli now pinelli is kind of a wide open book right now whether he plays center whether he, whether he plays wing in the nhl i think it's obviously more likely he plays wing i mean that's the case with any prospect most likely going to the nhl level but i think pinelli does have a strong uh, chance to be a center long term but i think pinelli has a lot of strong qualities kind of like mctavish there's nothing that really stands out but the skating is really solid. The overall work ethic is really good. The skill can be really silky at times, and I think there's a lot to like maybe on a third line or maybe even a second line in the future for the Preds. Now going on to the number 19 spot, though, in the Chicago Blackhawks who moved back. I think they'll still get a great player at number 19, and that guy will be Cole Sillinger. Cole Sillinger, I think, makes a lot of sense for what Chicago is going for. They're going for a lot of skilled, a lot of ten like tenacious young forwards, and I think Cole Sillinger definitely fits that mold. In terms of defensive play, there is some work to be done there, but I think it's mostly just putting in the work that is the problem. He has defensive skill, he just hasn't really shown that so far, but the skating, the the, the, pat, the uh, shot is just unbelievable for Cole Sillinger. He loves to shoot the puck, I think alongside a guy like Kirby Dock or a Lucas Reichel, he fit right at home. But now going on to number 20 and the Boston Bruins. My next pick for them is going to come for the defense, and it's going to go to Canadian D-man Carson Kuhlmans. Now, I think when it comes to Carson Kuhlmans, there's a lot to like. I personally would not have him this high, but I could definitely see Boston going at this spot and being pretty content with him. Kuhlmans has a lot of good values, though. I think in terms of his overall play, there's a lot to like. I don't think there's a lot of great projectability or great ceiling there. He's not going to be a guy that I think really is going to be a true top four D-man, but as a bottom pair, sturdy, kind of solid role. I think Coleman's could definitely be that. Maybe a lesser of Brandon Carlo on that team, perhaps. He's got great size, great physicality. And I think as an overall product, could become a decent part of that team. Now we're going to go into number 21, though. And Minnesota Wild will get one of the steals of the first round and end up selecting Fabian Liesel. Dropping down this hard, it seems like it's an inevitability at this point for Liesel. There's a lot of character concerns right now that, I, at least from what I've heard as well, aren't really warranted. But in terms of the just raw product on the ice. Lisa is one of the most fun and efficient players of this draft. Play driving, skill, tenacity, the overall work ethic is just all there with Fabian Liesel, at least on the ice. And I think as a Minnesota Wild, he would do so well with guys like Marco Rossi and Kirill Kaprizov in the future. Now going on to number 23, oh, actually, wait, no, 20, uh, 22 by the Detroit Red Wings. This pick coming from the Washington Capitals and the Jacob Verona trade. I think Detroit will also get another winger on their hands and they will end up selecting Isaac Rosen. Another Swedish forward on top of their just plethora of wingers already. I think there's quite a bit of ways this pick could go, but I think they will go for another forward here and just go for uh, just a loading up on that forward group. I think Rosen is a guy though that has a lot of good qualities and would definitely be worth getting another forward in this draft. I think at number 22, he's a great pick. His overall two-way abilities are fantastic. His skating is really sublime. He isn't under the radar efficient, get the job done kind of forward. And I think for Detroit, they have a lot of uses for a guy like that. Now going on to number 23 though, and the Columbus Blue Jackets, they end up selecting Simone Rob uh, Simone, not Robertson, Simone Edmondson, uh, number five. They will go for a winger here though, and go for Russian winger, Nikita Chibrikov. Now we obviously saw Chin uh, Chinikov in the last draft and how he went in the first round. Nikita Chibrikov is much less of a, uh, of a uh, let's say a, uh, <laughs> a reach because Chipper Cop might be actually worth that 23rd overall pick. In terms of skill and just entertainment value, Trevor Cobb is one of the best in this draft, but the offensive game, the potential there is pretty amazing, and if Columbus is able to unlock that, they might have a top six winger and a true one on their hands. Now going on to number 24, though, my pick for the Minnesota Wild from the Pittsburgh pick is going to end up being Brennan Offman. Now, they will take two wingers in this draft, but I think it will be it will work out for them. I mean, Lee Sol is just a gimme, but at number 24, 
Brennan often, I think, would really fit that team well. He's an under-the-radar, more small forward, but Minnesota already has experience drafting with Marco Rossi in that area. But Brennan often has a great shot, great overall position ability. He's just able to get in two spots really easily, kind of has a Cole Caulfield uh, ability to him in that way. But I think he's a great overall forward. He's a dynamic guy as well. You saw that in the World Juniors, and I think you will see that eventually at the NHL level. Next up, going to number 25, though, and the next pick coming from the Florida Panthers. My pick for them is going to be a defenseman, and I think they will go for Russian D-man Daniil Chayka. Now, Daniil Chayka could go as high as the top 15, I think, in this draft. It's kind of uh, in the wild world right now where he will actually go, but I think Chayka is an interesting guy here. He has great physicality, great size to him. He's a really good skater overall, and those are some good qualities. I think there's still a lot to look forward to with Chayka, even though the offensive game might be a little bit stunted, it might be a little bit in the in the air right now. We don't really know what's going to happen there, but he could still become an NHL guy, likely a bottom pairing one, but a really serviceable guy at that. Now going on to number 26, though, and going on to the Carolina Hurricanes. This is going to be one of the most interesting picks of this first round, a guy coming out of nowhere for a lot of people. At number 26, I think Carolina will end up selecting Shy Buiam. Now, Buiam is an interesting defensive prospect who, in terms of the actual play, has one of the most interesting profiles in the entire draft. He is a turnover machine. He gives the puck away so much. But on the flip side, his transition ability, his offensive ability, when he's not giving the puck away, pretty much everything about him screams just an offensive, dynamic defenseman. So much to like there, and I think Carolina will end up jumping on the opportunity. Now going on to number 27, uh, speaking of jumping on the opportunity, I think this is a perfect fit for the Colorado Avalanche. I think they will end up selecting at number 27, Sasha Pasajov. Now, Sasha Pashajov is just a super interesting guy to me. It really depends on which team he goes to, on how successful he will be, and Colorado is the perfect fit for them. Really, the only thing in Sasha Pashajov's game that he's just lacking or not really there is the skating consistency and the just raw excitement there, the raw ability there. That will hold him back to the NHL level, but Colorado has a system of developing great skaters, and Pashajov could be one of the best goal scorers of this draft, one of the best offensive minds of this draft. If you can get the skating soaring out, he could be a first line winger and could be an awesome one too. But now going on to the 28th overall pick, another pick here by the New Jersey Devils, this coming from the New York Islanders, Kyle Palmieri trade. And in this spot, I think they will go for a forward after they went for Brant Clark at 6th overall. And I think they will end up selecting QMJHL goal scorer, Zachary Bolduke. Now, Bolduke is one of the most polarizing prospects of this draft for me personally, because I think there's some traits that really excite me. That goal scoring ability, that shot is supreme. But there's so much that I think could just hold him back so much at the NHL level or the pro game. His skating is just not good. It's just not good at all, especially for a player that projects to be a first round pick. I think this is a guy that has boomer bust potential. If he works out in New Jersey, kind of lock that. They got a great player, but there's a lot of concerns for me about his NHL future. But we're going to move on to the number 29th pick at the Vegas Gold Knights. This is where it starts to get a little bit crazy in terms of maybe the ranges we see in the later half of the first round. I think this will be an interesting spot as well for Vegas. I think they will select Canadian World Junior centerman Wyatt Johnston. Now, Wyatt Johnston is a good prospect. Just overall, there's not a lot to hate, not a lot to love, but his two-way ability, his under-the-radar play, his physicality, his size, there's a lot of different aspects, a lot of different assets in his game that I think Vegas could unlock. He is a true center. He will likely be a center in the NHL level. I think Vegas could likely use him as a third-line center, potentially in the future. Along with maybe Cody Glass if he actually ends up developing. Now we're going to move on to the 30th overall pick, once again from the Columbus Blue Jackets. This being in the Tampa Bay Lightning deal. And I think they will go for another true center in this draft and go for Samu Salmonen. Now, Samu Salmonen is really quickly becoming one of my more favorite prospects of this draft. He is a true center, great two-way force, and is a guy that for Finland is a super under-the-radar prospect, I think. I think it would be worth a first-round pick at this point. Has a lot of good qualities, a lot of good consistency. I think projects as an NHL player. It's just a matter of how good will he be. 
at that level. Probably more of a third line center, but who knows? Maybe he could be a second line guy if Columbus needs him to be. Now we're going to go on to the last pick of the draft. And of course, it'll be by the Montreal Canadiens because they'll obviously win the Stanley Cup 100% confirmed. But at number 31, I think this guy will is 100% deserving of a first round pick, but I think will be saved by the Montreal Canadiens. I think they're looking for the future and might be wanting to get a Brendan Gallagher replacement eventually. And I think this player is the perfect player for that. They will end up going at number 31 with Logan Stankoven. Even though he is one of the shorter prospects of this draft, he does not play like it. He plays like he's six foot five, barreling pro players left and right. And he is small, but he actually does that. He has such a tenacious, such a great work ethic prospect. Always puts the work in every single shift. And his offensive ability is just also awesome. He can get pucks away from opponents at such an amazing rate. His forging is just unbelievable. I mean, consistency-wise, Montreal will just love what they see in him, which they should. He is amazing. But that will pretty much be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this 2021 Mock Draft Simulation, make sure hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that notification bell to be notified on all the future videos and streams going live. Make sure you comment down below what are your thoughts on my Mock Draft Simulation, what do you agree and disagree with, and who do you see your team picking? How do you see the Mock Draft, or how do you see the first round ending up? Let me know your thoughts. Of course, make sure you share this video with your friends. Get it out there, boys, and click on this card for all my 2022 NHL draft content right on playlist. My name is Nathan. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video or stream. Goodbye.